Hello, our friends. Happy birthday to Evolutionary. Actually, today is uh, the six-year anniversary of Evolutionary Energy Arts. Yes, indeed. Six years. And so it's been, been quite a while. A lot of work. Yes, it's been a lot of work, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears, a lot of, you know, let's get this done. And, and you guys are all here to help. Thank you. Absolutely. The reality is, I'd say somewhere around four or five thousand videos, uh, even though there's only 281 showing up on evolutionary and 1.8 on um, E Arts. So, you know, that's like 2000 there. And then Hearts Home, the newest with 116. Um, but just as you guys know, you've been part of the family for a long time. There's been so many videos taken down by the power structure. And then there's a lot that we had to um, just put on invisible because of getting uh, strikes and not wanting them to be able to find something else to get a strike and get rid of us. Mm -hmm. So we've made it six years. That's awesome. Pretty good. So thank you guys for being on this ride. So start here, looking, breaking, President B, using a pseudonym, Robert L. Peters, when emailing his son's business associates, including using it to schedule secret calls with the president of Ukraine. Use of this name prevented discovery of messages under the Freedom of Information Act. Representative James Comer is demanding NARA provide records pertaining to his fake email address. As we've heard of millions, you know, it's, it's so interesting to see some of the salaries of these public officials that might make, you know, a, a good deal of money compared to most people, you know, 100000 200000 250000 But when you look at their net worth and it's like, 97 million, 125 million. And again, it seems to increase when it comes to like number one and number two currently, their net worth in, in it just increased like five to ten fold in like a year. How does that happen? Well, now we know. <laughs> I know. And, you know, they really do need to pay them well. So they're more apt to stay into the system. So they get themselves indebted also. Well, the system pays them well under the books. Yeah, you know, and again, how much taxes do they pay? They, they, you know, again, they could show whatever they want to show when they have so much money coming in from other avenues, not necessarily legal. Nope. Insider trading. How about that with Pelosi? Insider trading. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, the corruption on this planet is just it's it's insane it's at the highest levels you can imagine and the higher up you go the worse it gets uh definitely yep and here we have un insider i've seen this multiple times popping up i was going to bring it up yesterday and i was like eh, let me hold off and then it's like oh there's a couple more people talking about it they're saying that biden's going to declare a climate emergency and it's going to lead to rationing of meat, gas, and electricity. Well, you know, they're trying to take away wood stoves. They're trying to take away gas. They're trying to take away pretty much anything that could lead to self-sufficiency. So it would not surprise me in the least. They say he's about to sign an executive order that will declare a climate emergency grant granting the executive powers sweeping new powers to enforce rations, lockdowns, and other tyrannical measures in order to save the planet from global warming, according to a UN insider that's been working with uh, the president. According to Heartland Institute, who revealed that uh, JB has been working with the UN to prepare the climate emergency executive order, that's going to see rationing on gas, restrictions on energy use, and limitations on air travel. One of the things that really hit me when we uh, had that channeling coming through of the children from 2055 was that there's no airplanes. Nobody flies in airplanes. Humans do not fly in airplanes. And now you could start to see that already. Here we are, 2023. And that's already starting to manifest. 
you know, how about France? You know, if, if there's a train, you got to take the train. You can't take the plane. You know, this is what's coming everywhere. And it's just part of that complete lockdown to the point where, you know, at some point in time, you're literally shackled. <laughs> or, you know, that shackle might be actually something that's under the skin. Right. And, and if you don't have these uh, ways to be self-sufficient at your own home, then you are going to be a little more dependent on the system and they're going to limit you. The other thing that keeps making the rounds is talk again and, and of there being some sort of selective service draft that will come as soon as they open up a bigger theater over in Europe or if it's Taiwan first, but probably Europe could be simultaneously. Uh, Maui, as we know, uh, had the fires and now Oahu, as you see, a huge fire going on over here started yesterday now uh these are the latest numbers i could uh, from red cross working this incredible challenge plus search and rescue 195 people we're ramping up every day we're not 494 people from fema we're constantly on with washington and the white house uh talking about our crisis but now we've got 950 people in hotel rooms 414 hotel rooms are filling up for those people and 500 people housed by airbnb the recovery is ongoing if you need support, come here. And tomorrow night, I will give a statewide address uh, to share your message. And in case you missed, 111 fatalities, 111, and 2,200 structures gone. Hmm. And 45% so far is what they've searched through. S still many, many people missing. And, uh, you know, a a great contributions from other people you know we've been talking about the Mountain Dew thing it seems like the Mountain Dew thing might be like the Simpsons thing because there's more than just with a Maui burst I know and we do have some very wonderful family members who are on top of it and they're watching this stuff and very good at you know finding finding diamonds in the rough that i think you know if we can get this information out there is going to help a lot of people in the sense that they'll be like oh my gosh i absolutely do need to prepare because this is just too in your face yeah so after seeing the maui fire burst it looks like we should issue a code red because mountain dew's baja blast is on deck here comes hillary yeah, isn't that interesting the way they decide to do this? Maui Burst, Code Red. Hmm, it, what's that going to be? It looks like Reptilian Claws there. Sure does. Let's look at this. What is this? Is it, is it a demon? Oh, it's like a dinosaur. Like a dinosaur. Look at this. It's a dinosaur, airplanes, bombs, and yeah. So is it some sort of reptilian attack? Or is it, is it Code Red as in Red Dawn? Uh-huh. Yeah, the reptilians orchestrating it. Baja Blast. It's a do with a blast of na natural and artificial flavors. Natural and artificial. Yeah, take something like a tropical storm, turn it into a Cat 4, Cat 5, as, as Hillary is um, supposed to be up to a Cat 3, certainly perhaps a Cat 4, and it wouldn't surprise us. So... What does this southern shock mean? Is there going to be some hurricanes impacting the coastline somewhere in the southeast? That wouldn't surprise me. And then we also have Mountain Dew Revolution. You know, you can't make this stuff up. Okay, it's just, it's just brainstorming. It's, you know, sure, it's just marketing. Marketing research, guys. Yeah, they say you want a revolution. Isn't it curious? Uh, Vivek Ram, Rams, Ramasmi, Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy. Yes, there we go. Warrants Tucker Carlson, we're in a 1776 moment in this country. That was when we had the revolution. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Do they know something? Mm. Maybe they do. So he's the youngest Republican, sat down with Tucker in a wide-ranging interview this evening. Talked about views on 9-11, on the origins of the plague upon the land. And he says, we can handle the truth. 
extending the analogy to a new American revolution. We the people live in a moment when the government believes the citizens of this nation cannot be trusted with the truth. Uh, I, th I don't think it's quite that way. That's a way to twist it. I think there is a bipartisan consensus in this country right now that we the people can't handle the truth. It's just like Jack Nicholson. So, you know, when you look into who he is, by the way, uh, Tucker was also like plug in like you should. Maybe we should take a look at this guy. Maybe this is the guy we should all get behind. Right away, um, Yale Law School, Harvard. You know, he's coming from the Ivy League. Where's he got his money? And he's got a lot of money. His net worth is $630 million. His wealth comes from biotech and finances. No, you're, you're not going to get anything from this guy. He's one of them. He, you know, he's 38. He's he's young. He's got hot, intense energy. And he, at, at the same time, has kind of got this real casual, like he's just shooting from the hip. He's going to give you nothing but the truth. Yeah, no, he's one of them. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, looking at where his wealth, wealth does come from in the biotech you know, our bodies and technology, um, you know, m merging AI and, and humans. I think this is, this is clear. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Oh, and by the way, he threatened to sue the WEF because they had him down there saying he was one of their young global leaders. And he said that he didn't give consent for them to have a page with his, his face and name. And that he threatened lawsuit, so they pulled it down. Now, is that all for show? Was he really? Uh, again, six hundred and something million dollars. You went to Yale. You went to Harvard, uh, and you know you made your money in biotech. He's one of them. I, I can't state it any clearer. Not me neither. Yep. Again, they they always want to dangle carrots. They always want to say. Look, here's your guy that's going to fix the system, but the system is rigged. That's the bottom line. There's no fixing something that is completely rigged. It's like going into the Vegas casino. And yeah, they got to let people win a little bit. Otherwise, nobody will go in there. But in reality, the house always wins. That's true. So as we see, this is the cone. It is interesting to say the least. And, you know, will we see the first, um, you know, the first tropical storm hurricane impacting Southern California in 84 years? Look at these. Hmm. This, this really could be something. Uh, so we will definitely watch this. And then I think of the timing. August 17th. Mm. You know, it's not only evolutionaries birthday it's an anniversary of something else isn't it i i think it is let me double check very and time and time again i mean we are really really no i think i was off a week well we're, we're still we're running out of c but theories know, but anyway i'm as i'm yelling over my shoulder mm -hmm. um lion's gate Yep. Eight eight. Yep. That's when the fire started. Eight eight. Lionsgate. That's when the fire started. Yes, and this is where they use a form of witchcraft, dark witchcraft, and they use the ether and they use the energy around them to gain momentum. It's just awful. It was August twenty first. Um, so yeah, four days later the eclipse. But you know, again. Oh, and don't forget, you know, the other eclipse coming in October, six months later, then we have the April eclipse. Hmm, this is really interesting, and we shall keep up on that. Meanwhile, Russia is madly trying to build 6,000 attack drones, and they're getting help from Iran, uh, and they want to have 6,000 drones built by January 1st. Yeah, things are really, really escalating. We have the UK about to send Ukrainian <clears throat> mercenaries to Africa. 
Yeah, apparently the UK is interested in expanding its anti-Russian provocations into Africa. Uh, M M M16 is allegedly preparing a team of Ukrainian saboteurs to intervene in African countries and neutralize the growing wave of cooperation with Russia on the continent. So, yeah, you know, again, that war is already well, well underway. I think most of us do get that. Meanwhile, we have New York residents begging to close the border because of the destruction of their city. There's just, there's so many people. There's nowhere to house them. You know, they're just all over the streets. Again, we're talking about the migrant immigrant situation, which is not just in the U.S. And it, it's all over uh, all the NATO countries. And, you know, this is an 1808 curious encounter. Again, uh, there are so many documented cases uh, in 1808. Uh, that was just 200 and a little bit m more years ago. But we have documented curious cases going back to the Middle Ages of, you know, the UFO phenomenon, the UFO, UAP phenomenon. And, you know, mass sightings, so many people seeing these things. You know, it always makes me chuckle when people say, well, it started when they blasted the atomic bomb and Roswell. No, <laughs> No, this is this has always been, always been. You know, this one is uh, in Sweden. And, you know, these were curious. It was a cloudless afternoon, May 16th, 1808. A hard wind blew from the west. The sun over the village grew suddenly dim. At the western horizon, a great number of spherical bodies appeared. They were heading towards the sun and changed from dark brown to black as they got closer to the sun. As they approached, they lost speed, but sped up again after passing in front of the sun. They moved in a straight procession across the sky to the eastern horizon. According to transactions of the Swedish Academy of Sciences, the phenomenon lasted uninterruptedly upwards of two hours, during which time millions of similar bodies continually rose in the west, one after the other, irregularly and continued their career in exactly the same manner. Some of the balls fell out of the sky, several landing not far from K.G. Wettermark, secretary of the Swedish Academy of Sciences. Seen just before they hit the ground, they re resembled those air bubbles which children used to produce from soap suds by means of a reed. When the spot where the balls had fallen was immediately after examined, nothing was to be seen but a scarcely perceptible film or pellicle, as thin and fine as a cobweb which was changing colors but soon entirely dried up and vanished. The balls still in the air continued their passage until all disappeared in the east. Curious, to say the least, but, you know, there's so many cases of these absolute bizarre things uh, that have happened. And, you know, one other thing that was fascinating was uh, all these sightings of aerial vehicles, uh, maybe a generation or two before the time that they actually became an, a, a, a regularity and something that was known. Like, there were so many sightings of blimps, things that looked like dirigibles. And, you know, just like the Goodyear blimp, etc. A generation before they actually were made and produced and everybody knew about them. So curious. It, it's almost like somebody likes to have a, a little laugh, a little snicker and say, look at the humans. Let's 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 give them one to talk about. Let's play with them. Let's play with them. Let's see what they say, what they do. And I got to tell you, when I when I first uh, was going through my awakening, I did see one of these. It wasn't a ball, but it was a teardrop, and it was huge. It was like three or four of me. And it this was out in the Nevada desert right before the turnoff going into Pahrump. It came straight down super fast, hit the ground, and it popped like a bubble. Not kidding you. It was amazing. It, it, was, it was them saying hello is, is what it was. It was great. Well, <clears throat> I didn't realize. I remember you telling me that, that before, but I didn't realize that it popped like a bubble. Curious. And we brought this up. Um, but I would remember because she would point out, she'd say, that's the spot right there. <laughs> and it wasn't far from the spot that we saw 
um, a fighter jet right. that had some sort of anti-gravity because it made absolutely no sound. And it pulled up and it went right alongside of us, almost like the guy was saying, hey guys, you know, we know you or something or we're watching you. Mm -hmm. And then it just seemed to disappear into the side of a mountain. Sure it was really weird, but you know, our world is not what it appears to be. And this is a look at just a list and you know, this is all cattle mutilations. Again, he says, whatever the phenomenon is, it sure likes cattle. Y yeah, again, this is basically just getting more resources to create grays, what we call gray aliens. Because again, they, they utilize the DNA to create these slaves. That's what they are. It's, it's pretty creepy, yeah. It's seriously cre creepy. And then you think about the human abductions. Oh, I know. It's it's enough to get you to do one of those looks. Like, I don't know. You, you better not talk about that stuff around here. That's just, yeah, that's worse than trying to take my banana. Yeah, it's pretty bad. It is. Thanks, guys, again for being part of this family. Thanks for sticking with us through all these trials and tribulations. We look forward to your comments and your suggestions too i mean what do you guys want to see more of let us know and uh, as always stay prepared guys namaste namaste